Hi everyone, welcome to this Revit 2022.1 update video. In this video, we're going to take a look at some structural features, as well as some of the additional reinforcement tools that Autodesk have added in. We'll also take a look at a few platform tools, which would enable us to achieve better workflows with day-to-day -day tools, such as sheet creation, and such as things like mirroring and copying. Let's make a start by looking at couplers. So in previous releases, when we added a coupler between dissimilar rebars, i.e. different diameters, we had to have that coupler actually created or that type created. Additionally, if we had placed in a coupler between two rebars of the same diameter, and then we decided to change the diameter of a reinforcement bar, the coupler would be deleted. So let's now take a look at the new feature of retaining those couplers. So we'll start by actually adding a coupler in here. So you can see that we've got this core wall open. So we'll go to our structure ribbon. We'll select rebar coupler. And you can see here that I'm going to place a coupler between two rebars. So let's add one of these couplers in and you can now see that coupler added. So we can now see that the coupler has been placed between these two H20 bars. So let's now go ahead and change one of these reinforcement bars. So I'll change this here perhaps to a H10. And straight away, we can now see that we have a warning applied here, and you'll notice that the coupler has been retained. So what Revit has now done is created a new type called Type 3 to generate that new coupler. Of course, now, if I select the coupler, like so, and then we'll go to Edit Type, we can now see that Revit has created that new threaded coupler. Of course, we'll have to go in and change the external diameter and some of the other manufacturer's information, but that's a great step forward. Another main feature of reinforcement bar in Revit 2022.1 is the ability to add multiple constraints. So let's take a look at this. We'll go into our 3D working view over here. And what I'll do here is I'll just close down this window and we'll zoom in here. So we can now see that we have a number of different pad foundations. So let's zoom into some of these foundations here and you can see that we've got these starter bars coming up to the columns. So let's say that I wanted to actually change the length of the starter bar there to achieve a, a longer lap. What I'd need to do is edit those rebar constraints. To enable me to do this, I've run a Dynamo script to actually take the rebar number and match that to the schedule mark. Why have I done that? Well, it allows me to select all of these by the schedule mark. So you can now see that I've selected all of those starter bars. Okay, so now we've got those starter bars selected, we can come up and click Edit Constraint, and this is really good. If we select Edit Constraint, you'll now notice that we can edit all of those bars that are in the selection set simultaneously, which of course is a huge step forward. So if I was to select this bar here, you can now see I've got Edit Rebar Constraints. So that's given us a lap of 920. So I've just put in 1200 in there, and straight away now, we can now see that all those bars have actually changed in that selection set. So again, a huge step forward. That would have been very time consuming in older releases. Let's now take a look at some platform tools. So what I'm gonna do here is show you how we can actually mirror things like reinforcement bar with a new platform tool. So I'm just gonna go ahead and open up a sectional view in here. And if we zoom in, you can see that we've got these trimming bars or these anti-crack bars uh, on this structural opening here. Now, what I want to do is actually mirror these from this position to the top of the opening. So let's go ahead and select these bars. And here, I want to mirror these. So, of course, I can go to Mirror Draw Axes. And, of course, here, I can just go ahead and find the midpoint of my structural opening, like so, and mirror those across. Nice and easy. However, let's say that we wanted to now mirror the bars again to produce this uh, area here. So what I'm gonna do is just remove those bars that are already in place, like so. And I'm gonna show you a really neat platform tool. So I'll make a selection of these rebars over here. I'll come to uh, mirror draw axes. Now, of course, here, what I really want to do is find the center line of this wall. So we've got a great tool here. If I go to snap overrides, you can now see that we've got snap mid between two points. Yeah, so this is, a, again, a huge step forward. So if I pick on this end point here and this end point here, can you now see that Revit's actually displaying that midpoint to me? So, of course, now I can just now come across and then mirror those 
much easier than I would have done before. So in previous releases, I'd have had to have um, drawn a reference plane or detail line or something similar to actually achieve that. So that's really useful. Another cool tool we've got is the ability to copy sheets. So if I just go down to my sheet views in here, and let's just open up one of these sheets just so we can see what it looks like. So you can see here that I've got a sheet open here. You can see that I've got a number of reinforcement cages actually on that sheet. Now let's say that I wanted to now duplicate that sheet. I can now right click over it here and you'll notice we've got this new tool, Duplicate Sheet. So I can just simply duplicate the empty sheet and what that would do is up, uh, up instance the sheet number and all of the other properties on the actual title block. I could duplicate with sheet detailing or duplicate with views. So what I'm going to do here is say duplicate with sheet detailing and what that will do is take any of this annotation and detail components through as well. So let's do that. So you can now see I've got a completely new sheet. You'll notice that all of the uh, uh, details have been taken through. So I've got my schedule there. I've got the uh, detail components and my text blocks and everything else there. And of course, if we zoom in down here, we can actually see that we've got a uh, copy of down there. It's up instance, the drawing number. So you can now see we've got 0003 and so on. So that's much faster workflow. Obviously before, we'd have had to have created a new sheet from scratch each time we needed it. Staying with the platform tools, we're going to take a look at another really cool addition, which is the ability to actually search for categories. So for example, let's say that I wanted to um, switch off reinforcement bar. If I go into visibility graphics, as you know, I'd have to scroll all the way down here. I then have to go and find structural rebar and switch it off. But let's say that I also wanted to switch off some detail components and symbols and so on. You know, I'd have to go and do some more searching for that. So what we've now got here is category name search. So in there, I could just simply type in the word rebar and you can now see that that search has been applied to the list. So of course in here, I can just go and uh, switch off all of these things much, much quicker. So that's really, really useful. This category name search would also appear in a number of different dialog box. So for example, if I went to manage and I went to the object styles in here, again, you can see I've got that category name search. So let's say here, I'm looking for something like structural framing. For example, I can just type it in. You can see now I've got bridge framing and also structural framing here. So a very small change, but incredibly useful. Another useful change is the ability to use multiple alignments. So let's just take a look at this. So we'll open up a plan view. So we'll go into our structural plans up here and we'll just go and open up perhaps top of foundation in here. Okay, so let's zoom in and we'll just demonstrate this by placing down a couple of foundations. So I'll just place down some of these at random like this. Okay, and then we'll go into the align tool. Yep, so standard align tool. But you'll now notice up here, we have additional tools. So I have multiple alignment in here and I have the ability to also automatically lock these elements together. So let's take a look at this. So I'm gonna start with this and I want to align that, that and that. And you'll notice that it's locked all of those items as well. So of course now, when I move one of these foundations, all of the other foundations move. So again, very small change there, but very useful in a day-to-day -day use of Revit. Okay, so that's just covered some of the platform tools there and also a couple of the structural improvements to Revit 2022.1. Hope that's been useful and speak to you soon.